Okay. Um, well, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for having me today. I'm Dr. Katie Moore. I'm the Associate Program um, Director for the Residency and a Movement Disorder faculty member here. I've been honored to take on the leadership of our Educate the Educators initiative, which includes this series, and I hope my short presentation this morning will be helpful for you. Um, for a lot of you, this is going to be a reminder, but I want to focus our reminder today on the impact of your work in resident feedback and assessment um, and the impact that that has on both the residents and the residency leadership. So hopefully this will advance. Okay, so um, now even from the Maureen Road Clinic, I can feel your size of dread as you see me mention feedback. And while we're gonna review some effective um, feedback tips, I'm gonna focus in these five minutes on why effective feedback is so important. In academic medicine, we're familiar with a three-part aim of providing and improving patient care, research, and medical education. But medical education can tend to play a third wheel to the others, but I would argue that it can have just as much, if not more, impact on our future. Every single one of us who interacts with our learners has the chance to make an impact, and all of that without a lab or grant funding. So like good science and good clinical care, effective feedback requires us to be intentional, to be observant, to be inquisitive, and importantly for this talk, to report your findings. These are all skills that you already have. So how do we improve as people? Um, many of you may have been spending time recently considering your aspirations and goals for 2024. We sit and make lists of areas in our lives we wanna improve. And I want to remind you that our residents are enthusiastic and motivated physicians who are striving to be better neurologists with us. The leadership of the residency already requires them to develop their own individualized learning plans. And just like any of us developing our own 2024 resolutions, the residents and the leadership can benefit from trusted mentors and leaders in our own journey. So basically, we need you. Um, as iron sharpens iron, the residents need you to identify concrete and objective as well as specific areas they can be working on. And that's why your feedback is so valuable to us. So together we can do it. So let's talk a little bit um, and go back to your skills in science and clinical care and how you can pivot those to giving um, effective feedback. So first being intentional, good science, good clinical care doesn't just happen. You have to be intentional and focused on these aspects of your work. And I encourage you with me to be intentional about this critical part of our three part mission. Being observant. If you're anything like me, you've got at least 10 things on your mind at all time and focusing your observation on trainees, whether that's their presentation, their notes, exams, interactions with others, help us to develop better feedback. So we have to be focused on those things. Be inquisitive. It's not often clear how someone has reasoned out a problem or how someone might want to improve. Ask the residents how they arrived at a diagnosis, even if it's correct. You can learn a lot about their thinking process and how we can help this get stronger. And again, I want to emphasize report your findings. Giving timely in-person feedback to residents can be invaluable, but just like a scientific breakthrough, you have to shine, share your findings. Your written feedback to the residents and the leadership is critical to help us take your finding, the area of growth that you've identified, and complete the cycle of planning for changing, improving, and then reviewing. So what would reviewer two say about your feedback? Um, so if you're reporting your findings, um, you want to get good feedback from your reviewers. We've all been there like um, the comments on the left, read more, keep up the good work, um, accidentally just filling in a single letter. Um, and while you're awesome and we want to have good positive feedback for the resident, it's always nice to see here you're doing a good job. Really effective feedback um, is more like that on the right. And this is the stuff that would get past a reviewer and not get you desk rejected. So this kind of feedback is specific. And as you'll see there, focuses on one area. It doesn't have to be comprehensive. It's timely, objective, and plan-based. So not focusing on somebody's personality, but tell them, you know, here's some specific areas that I've noticed that you could be working on. 
You'll see the comments on the right again do not have to be comprehensive. They're specific and concrete. And the resident can take your feedback and run with it, so to speak. So with this feedback, the resident and their advisor can develop a plan to improve these areas. So say, for instance, you asked a friend or partner how you could improve like your 2024 resolutions. Perhaps something you'd want something similar, something specific, timely, objective, and plan-based, not necessarily a comprehensive list of all your faults. <laughs> so just like in research, you can provide effective written feedback by focusing on a specific area for improvement. So um, in the interest of giving Dr. Tag all his time, I won't review this video with you, but I think it's a really um, interesting uh, listen. It's about three minutes long. So I encourage you to click this link or, or use the QR code. Basically, this is a short video from the medical interns at the University of Cincinnati. And one of the things that they, re that they say is telling you to give better feedback is just like you telling us to read more. So they realize that that's not particularly helpful. And so hopefully you'll recognize some of the words on the slide that I've been emphasizing today. You want to have examples of feedback that are specific, timely, objective, and plan-based. And that's how the residents can really take what you're taking the time to write and improve their journey. So I hope you'll join me this year, 2024, in my own resolution to strive to improve my written feedback to the residents so that to, together we can help them be prepared to represent us well. And if you're an enthusiastic educator, and want to help improve education across our department, I'd encourage you to reach out to me as we make our plan. Thank you, Katie.